What is Hermeticism? Part 6 We continue our studies of the Emerald Tablet of Hermes Trismegistus with the third set of lines in the sequence. And as all things have been and arose from one by the mediation of one, so all things have their birth from this one thing by adaptation. These lines of verse indicate that all forms and all manifest appearances are the result of a type of refraction caused by the mediation of one, i.e. via an eternal continuum in the aspect of a conscious awareness entering into observation of the manifested world. This eternal continuum, the ancient Kabbalists named Ein Sof, although a vast subject, the basic idea was simply demonstrated through physics when Isaac Newton discovered that a triangular prism would separate out a singular beam of sunlight into the rainbow spectrum, otherwise known as refraction. And we find this same principle in nature when witnessing the sun's light through water vapour in the form of a rainbow. This refraction is the adaptation spoken of in the second part of the line we study today. All things have their birth from this one thing, by adaptation. Newton also discovered that with a second prism, this refracted rainbow spectrum of light could be reconstituted back into a single beam of white light. This is a beautifully simple and literal demonstration of an alchemical maxim Solve et coagula. Dissolve and coagulate, that we find peppered throughout various alchemical texts and diagrams. This is a method for attaining the one thing, as stated in the lines we studied in our previous episode. To do or to accomplish the miracles of one only thing. We must understand that the alchemists used all possible ways of demonstrating spiritual laws and metaphors via the observation of the workings of nature, just as we understood in our previous episode through the realisation that principles at work in the greater world or the universe, otherwise known as the macrocosm, are reflected in the smaller world, otherwise known as the microcosm. Similarly, anything we observe in the outer and physical laws of the world we inhabit are also reflected in some manner in a relationship with our own inner world. This is at first perhaps difficult to fully grasp, but if we pay close attention, we may, through various forms of personal inner work, come to know this aspect of what we call our self. None of these aspects are purely conceptual. Hermeticism is always ultimately rooted in practical application that we call the opera, the work. The Hermetic tradition takes this in its widest sense and refers to it as 
the great work. Another important maxim that we shall introduce here is ora et labora, pray and work. Remember, you must know thyself to enter hermeticism. But let us ask, truly, what is that self that we must know? Is it the everyday self that owns a specific brand of car, or that identifies itself as a voter of a particular political party? Or is the self that we must know a self that we have never yet even caught a glimpse of? Gradually, and little by little, we shall understand. I very much hope you've enjoyed this video in the series What is Hermeticism? Please don't forget to click on the bell notification icon and subscribe to the channel. See you soon.